After discussing how earthquakes may affect structural masonry, you might be wondering how an earthquake could affect historic buildings. After this lecture, you will understand why it is important to conserve the monumental values of historic buildings in Groningen. We will have a look at those values and consider how to choose adequate, monument-compatible and durable interventions to prevent earthquake damage. In making our built heritage and monuments earthquake-proof, just strengthening is not enough. If done in an inconsiderate way, it could even have the opposite effect. Furthermore, the interventions and intervention technology always need to be in balance with design and cultural value of the objects. Intervention should respect the monumental values. In a moment, I will explain what monumental values are. First, let's consider how important monumental buildings are for us. In the past, our ancestors already took into account that they should provide extra support to make their most important buildings survive and to protect them against decay or collapse. In most cases, they used materials and techniques that appear a logical addition to the building concerns. What heritage are we talking about in Groningen? And what kind of historic buildings are concerned? Heritage ranges from city houses, farmhouses and manors, to railway stations and churches. And cultural heritage is much broader than just a single building. In order to deal with earthquakes, monuments and historic buildings need a lot more attention than ordinary buildings. They also need a special way of protection. Let's now have a look at what monumental values are and see why they need attention. The whole of design, construction technology and cultural value are the main components of the monumental value of an historic building. Art and craftsmanship, as well as history and age, also contribute to that value. For example, in heritage buildings, we may encounter important values which go beyond normal real estate value. These values may concern the building itself, as I just described, but can also be attributed to elements like mural paintings. These can be of importance because of their artistic qualities and age, but also because of the materials and techniques used to achieve them. Location and setting in the landscape can contribute to the monumental values as well. Several aspects may be involved where monumental values are concerned. Think of form and design, for example, or materials and substance, use and function, tradition and workmanship. Another aspect are location and setting, and spirit and feeling. And finally, the artistic and historic dimension. So, how can monumental values get lost? Examples abroad, resulting in severe losses of valuable historic substance, show us that we cannot just wait and let the earthquake come over us. For example, in this picture you can see the leftovers of what used to be very important mural paintings from the vaults of San Francesco's Basilica in Assisi. However, strengthening with the use of incompatible materials and techniques can also result in enormous damage to monumental buildings. As shown in this image, where the third floor collapsed due to the new concrete roof. And finally, strengthening may have strong visual implications, thus disturbing the aesthetics and the possibility for the public to enjoy the monument. Before intervening in historic buildings with monumental values, these values need to be assessed. The matrix, as shown here, is completed and discussed between monument owner, municipality and heritage authorities. These can provide a basis to obtain consensus and consequently to decide on the intervention. An intervention 
that respects monumental values is characterized by a combination of excellent design and feeling for the values. When we want to intervene, it is of course also necessary to first know if a crack or deformation is due to an earthquake or perhaps to other causes. We have to analyze and perhaps monitor the damage, as otherwise the intervention strategy might turn out to be wrong. Sometimes measures taken are quite far-reaching, like in this historic farmhouse in Groningen. Interventions should be monument-friendly and discreet. They should not be invasive. By the way, they can also be temporary. But be aware that also temporary solutions should do justice to the monument and allow the public to fully enjoy this monument. It is important to document the current state of conservation and to monitor the de damage development, observe and measure the changes in damage, such as a crack or deformation, just after a new event. And also to monitor the effect of future earthquakes after an intervention took place in order to learn from this. <coughs> so, now you have an idea of what monumental values are and why it is important to conserve them. And you also know what the specific requirements are for interventions that are both compatible and as durable as possible. Thank you for your attention.